because of, you know, really the top teams in the Big Ten are all in the same division. You know, you've got, you know, Michigan with their resurgence. You got Ohio State, who's who's seemingly always there. Uh, Penn State, Michigan State and, and, you know, all these teams play each other. So, you know, whereas I uh, and I think, Dre, we might have been texting talking about uh, potentially the Big Ten getting two teams in. Yeah, uh, I you know, th- it's got to be the perfect scenario, you know, because I don't think it's going to be. Uh, it's just going to be really difficult because all these teams play each other. You're you're going to need essentially, you know, Michigan and Ohio State to win out, you know, until the Thanksgiving game. And then what you would need Ohio State to win that and then Michigan potentially be the at large because Ohio State already has a loss. So it, it just it would have to be a well, perfect storm. But well. but it doesn't mean that there aren't extremely high quality, you know, teams in the Big Ten because there are. You know, I think if it was going to work, because I, I do think the big teams, those top teams are going to just eat each other alive. You know, they're going to mm-hmm. just, uh, um, you know, they're going to be beaten up on each other. And and I, I think if it was going to work, it would have to be one representative from the East and one representative from the West, Iowa, essentially, to make it to the playoff. Essentially, say if Iowa is undefeated and based on how the rest of the country is doing, you know, and their only loss, let's say, is – uh in a big 10 championship, or maybe they go on, they run a table and maybe, you know, Michigan or uh, Ohio state only has, you know, one loss. Right. Um, uh, you know, then, then those teams can, you know, one of those teams from the East because of their strength of schedule, especially towards the end of the season. Right. Let's say Iowa runs the table, but Michigan, you know, runs the table, but lose against Iowa in a big 10 championship. We'll look at it like this. You'll automatically put Iowa into a college football playoff. But now you talk about one lost Michigan team that has beaten both Ohio State, Penn State, and MSU. You no, know, are you, you know, based on how the rest of the country. Can you really say that team isn't, isn't a, you know, qualified to be a top four? Yeah. Exactly. So that, that's the type of scenario that could play out. I think it would have to be Iowa running the table, essentially, in the West. Um, that could open the door for two Big Ten teams to get in. And I think one thing that was huge and, you know, uh, was, you know, what happened with Bama. This past weekend, you know, Bama losing to Texas A&M. Yeah, that's going to hurt. That was a three and two on Texas uh, Texas A&M team. Um, and with Clemson being down this year, you can close. You can get rid of the ACC being involved. Yep. Then no one's going to make it. I, I think I, Mark, uh, I tuned to one of your shows uh, this past weekend, and you was talking about Wake Forest. What the is six and Wake 0, Forest? Right, they are no, undefeated. Right. They're no undefeated. one's going <laughs> like Wake Forest. Come on, let's be honest. They're, they're not going. <laughs> Get this thing done the ACC, you know. Hey, and, you got to create content, right? <laughs> <gotta> create scenarios, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, you know, Pac-12, no, not really worth there. Big Twelve, maybe Oklahoma, uh, but the, with the way they're playing, you just never know. They could drop one. You know, mm-hmm. they've been playing, so they've been skating on thin ice. Um, yeah, it's not the typical Oklahoma just exactly. blow through the Big Twelve. It's they've they've exactly. they've been struggling. So it's wide open. You know, it's really wide open for two Big Ten teams to get it done and get into the playoff this year. I think for that scenario, I think you've got to keep your fingers crossed for a Cincinnati loss because I think with That's where it. they're ranked now, and I don't, I think SMU is probably the toughest team left on their schedule. <clears throat> I'm not sure who they would play in the, um, you know, in the AAC championship, which obviously we're still pretty early, but because um, I, I think if, Cincinnati wins out I think they're they're going to get in uh because I I just think of just the doors that have been open and you know it's it, like you said Clemson's not there you know it's it's not the lock there with you know Clemson Alabama Ohio State where you just pencil those three teams in and everybody's just playing for the the fourth spot like it you know things have have changed quite Even a Notre bit Dame. But I, Notre Dame used yeah. to be in the mix for that fourth mm-hmm. spot the last couple, few years you know and they'll yep. get in you know that's not going to happen this year so that it's kind of, it's, it's pretty wide open this year. Yeah. I, I think Cincinnati, I, I would, I'd be willing to pencil in Cincinnati that they're going, they're going to be a team in the playoff. I would, I feel confident saying that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we got a long way before we get there, you know, Michigan's doing what they have to do uh, week by week. Um, but you know, as, as much good, you know, we, we have seen from this team, um, there, there are definitely, you know, what's the one thing that, you know, we've been consistent with every week is that we judge this team based on what boxes they are checking on that trajectory to win a Big Ten title. And they have checked a lot of those boxes, but there's still some gray area, you know, and, and it's still lies in the quarterback position. That's not to say Kay McNamara has been bad. Not that he's been steady. I think he's been solid. 
Um, he's been the uh, antithesis of a game manager. That, that's really who he is. You know, he, he, he allows the offense to stay on the field and, you know, doesn't put the defense typically in a bad position by turnovers. And you can win a lot of games that way. But the question is, uh, if you're if you're struggling at times to hit the big plays, which he did on Saturday night, um, one in particular, you know, was a touchdown that could have put the game in a much more comfortable uh, position. He missed it, you know, and it wasn't just that one. You can excuse one play, but it was a few throws, you know, uh, more than a handful that were not ideal. Um and he's got he's got uh, to at least you won't be perfect, but maybe convert at least half of those. You know he, he has to because as as this, as the schedule gets more backloaded and you know they play MSU, you know who's ranked. For, think about l- listen to this: the top three teams in sacks, and I know sacks on everything, quarterback hurries and pressures and everything, but just getting home. The top three teams in the country are Troy, Houston, and Marshall. <laughs> now, part I'm sure part of that is due to the competition that they're playing, right? Including each other. But fourth, it's MSU. So out of all the that if you consider which I do, MSU to be the first real power five team, they are, if you exclude those top three, they are number one in the country out of power five teams in sacks. So that's going to be a test. You know, how at East Lansing, how does K you know, react to that pressure, the pressure of the game and the, the literal pressure of the MSU defensive line, you know, and and the one thing about Michigan is that they actually done a pretty good job of keeping him clean. And uh-huh. yet he still has had these these uh, accuracy issues at times. So that that's going to be that, a dynamic that I'm not saying that he can't do it, but he has to prove that he can. And that's one of those boxes that he has to check. And if he can, that will be another huge step uh to winning those games and staying on a trajectory to win the big 10 but if he can't then you know we'll st- we, we may start seeing some limitations of this team as the schedule gets tougher yeah i i think i think michigan has done a really good job though of not putting kate in the situations to where you know we, we hey we gotta have it you know right here like we we talked about it uh going into the wisconsin game of you know, if, if you're you're got the ball on the 20 yard line, you know, you got to go 80 yards to get a touchdown or you need a field goal. You know, you got a minute 20 left like they've done a really good job of not putting him in those those situations. And I think the defense is. Is good enough where I don't think I don't think they'll let many teams get away from you. Like, I, I think you'll always be in the game. Um, but the tough part is, is without having that explosive pass game is even uh, some bad teams and teams that you probably should be up two and three scores. It's still going to be closer because of the style of offense that you play. So as long as these guys are, you know, have the, have the stomach and the gut for it. Um, I, I think they'll be, you know, I think they'll be okay. Um, you know, Northwestern's coming up next week and I, I just, you know, I, I clamor for it and I'm a broken record, but I'd love to see Cade flinging around quite a bit against Northwestern. Uh, I, I think we're, I think we're pretty clear that that's probably the worst team in the conference. So, you know, when you look at opportunities, like, like we've, we've talked about it and uh, again and again, but you, you don't get many opportunities. And when you do, you've got to take advantage of them because college football is so unforgiving, so yes. unforgiving. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens.